All in. There's the all in. He said all in? He said all in. For sure? Well, I guess. He said all in. Yes. Okay. One of the biggest pots in history. How much is the pot? I think it was about 3.1 million, a little bit over 3.1 million. I called off 1,500 big lines with one pair. <laughs> he turns his queens into a bluff catcher. I think I played perfect. Triple barreled with ace king. I played the biggest, biggest pot outside of Triton. What the f This is a weird hand. Maybe biggest overall TV, and it takes like 15 minutes to get up here. I saw someone's hand. Seven. I saw Wesley's hand. That 5,000 player that's fine. That's fine. Right? I haven't looked at my hand. I know what you have. I... <laughs> it's a weird spot. 30. I'm just gonna. Well, if you're gonna play, then. I fold, I fold. Just, I. I'm... Oh, switch, 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 switch. You already did. I know what you have. I know what you have. You've seen it already. What? Sorry. 30 to go right uh, now. Uh, yep. <laughs> <laughs> I know what you want. I know. Say, you know what? Thank you. <laughs> you, know what? You, you, you make a good point. You make a good point. I don't think he understands. So raised from Hank, a three bet from Wesley. How funny would it be if Doug's like, I, I know Wesley's hand, and then he just like, if he's like, I haven't looked, and he just mucks. <laughs> <laughs> that would be really <laughs> Don't know what Dwan has, but Dwan, who just got bluffed. Is going to four bet. Rob, but do you have a no, the yellow card? Never lost it. How about Rob? Rob, do you have a Rob? Do you have a button? No. Do you have one? No. no. Okay. No. Oh, three people left. Is that the camera? Yeah. Now this hand is weird for a couple of reasons. One, we're playing stand-up game. Two, the whole thing with Doug Polk saying, "I saw your hand." We are playing 500, 1,000 with a $3,000 big blind ante at Hustler Casino Live. It's a pretty big game. We're playing roughly $1.8 million deep. Action folds around to Hank and the hijack, who raises it to $7,000 with the ace eight offsuit. Over to Wesley, the liquidator. On the button, he makes it $30,000 with ace king. Perfectly fine, perfectly standard. It is worth noting that Doug Polk sees his hand. You probably don't want to be showing your cards to your neighbors when you're playing poker. But whatever, Doug Polk sees his hand. Over around to Tom Dwan in the straddle. He takes some time, he thinks about it, and then he four bets to $100,000 out of his $1.5 million stack with a mystery hand. I'm going to go ahead and spoil a mystery for you. He has pocket queens. Perfectly fine, perfectly reasonable. Hank gets out of the way. Let's see how Wesley proceeds with his ace king. So a three bet from Wesley to 30,000. Tom Dwan, who according to DGAF earlier has been playing a pretty low variant style, has decided to four bet to 100,000. And these players are deep. And Doug is watching because he knows what Wesley has, and Wesley has just five bet to 275,000. Action back over to Dewan. After a bit of deliberation, Wesley decides to five bet. Bumps it up. He's really trying to liquidate Tom. He makes it 275,000. This is a spot where I think Wesley probably wants to be somewhat inclined to just call when he is in position. If he was out of position, I think five betting would be reasonable. But from in position playing super duper deep stacked, you have to be careful putting in numerous bets because now what is Tom actually going to continue with? Well, it's going to be only very strong hands, right? And ace king does fine when Tom's range contains a whole lot of nonsense like ace queen, ace jack, ace five suited, etc. But once you put in the five bet, a lot of the hands like ace queen and ace jack are going to fold. And those are hands you really, really, really want to keep in the pot. All right, let's see what Tom does with the queens. 
I watched, I in the pot. It's 175 for Dwan to call. Again, we don't know what Dwan has. Small blind takes like a minute and a half. Limps. <laughs> Big blind takes a minute and a half. Min raises. <laughs> blind plays the same way to the river. River, finally the guy bets. Small blind bets. The guy uses like two time shit. <laughs> Calls top pair of time. I was just like, I'm just like, no, I'm not coming. I'm not playing more tournament. <laughs> I, 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 I got those from London because I've got my 200,000 tournament. You know the invitation on only? Um, I thought it was from the shot clock now though. Yeah, they were using their shot clocks. The point was, even with the shot clocks, they, they were just exactly like brutalizing. They the maximum amount of time they were going to use. I need all these oh, like, they're like max. Duane on the left side of your screen, Wesley on the right side. Invitation, this is good and pro. $250,000 buy-in, one re-entry allowed. Pounds? 20,000 pounds or 250,000. And there's the call from Duane. If you're not watching, come back to your screen right now. Over half a million dollars in the pot. We haven't seen a flop yet. Tom takes a sweet time and finds a call, which I think is the only option. You cannot go around folding a hand like queens here. If you do re-raise, presumably all in, what's gonna happen is Wesley's gonna call with aces and kings and maybe ace king, and he's gonna fold everything else, right? And you have to realize in the spot, Wesley's range should be aces, kings, maybe ace king, and then maybe a few bluffs with stuff like ace x suited, maybe suited connectors, who knows what Wesley's doing because Wesley does like to get in there and splash a bit. So. I think the play here is to call with your entire continuing range in Tom's shoes, and he does call with the pocket queens. Let's head to the flop. Well, the million was a reaction too, wasn't it? No. Yeah. I played a million in Eight, eight, three, two diamonds out there. Wesley does have the ace of diamonds. Yeah, they play separate day one. Then together on day two. This is when you invite a pro. Normally a pro will offer like a 5% pre-roll or something. That's one deal. They can do four pros in business then. He played a million pound. I played a million pound. But, but I don't, I mean, starting everyone Duan started the hand with about 1.5 million. Wesley has him covered. Oh, you know what they should do? They should just. Rex, those guys are good. Never leave the poker room. You know what they should do? They should just play like businessmen and amateurs or in pros separately all the way down to a final table each and then combined at like two tables and redraw and they play How it out. Maybe they can play them longer, yeah. Hey, I think longer guys, this is a really big pot. I don't know. Yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. Sorry, sorry. About one, two, five. Wesley just asked Juan how much he had behind and that got the whole table quiet. Wesley bets 125,000. Whatever Duan called with pre-flop, I can't imagine him folding on an 883 board to a $125,000 bet. 125? 125. That's what he bet. That is the bet. the call from Duan. Pot now, 812,000. The flop comes, eight, eight, three. Tom checks as he's gonna do with his entire range. Wesley should bet frequently and small. He should probably actually bet every single time in this spot because his range contains aces and kings and just a few nonsense bluffs. And, you know, Tom can certainly have those hands too, especially if he does just flat call the pre-flop four bet with aces and kings but maybe he does, maybe he doesn't. And 
really, Wesley should not have a whole lot of nonsense here. So this is a spot where he should be betting every time using a small size, as he does, 125k. That may seem a little bit small, you may think. Is Tom ever going to fold? Well, if he has absolutely nothing, he's going to fold. And you can also start to apply pressure for the later betting rounds when you do want to get all your money in with a hand like aces or kings. And by the way, aces or kings are going to be good enough on most runouts, unless a flush comes, to bet the flop, bet the turn, and jam the river. You can't be a chicken. And Wesley's no chicken. He's setting up an all-in when he has the nuts, and, you know, sometimes the bluffs. So, Wesley does go 125. Tom calls. Let's head to the turn. Duan with about 1.1 million behind. Turn a blank. Wesley's hands are shaking. And it looks like he is loading up for another bet. Remember, Doug Polk knows what Wesley has. Tom Duan, though, does not. Three hundred and fifty thousand over to Duan. Pot has got one point two million in it. The turn brings the five of hearts, a pretty big brick. Tom checks, and now Wesley has to decide if he should continue bluffing. Look, I think checking it back with Ace King is perfectly reasonable, but it's actually a pretty good bluffing hand in this spot because when you have Ace King, you make it far less likely that Tom has aces or kings because you block both of those hands, right? So this is a spot where. I think bluffing's actually reasonable enough. And Wesley does. He goes 350K. He starts getting the money in there. Definitely a tough spot for Tom with Queens. Let's see how he proceeds. The table has not been this quiet for four days. 1.2 million in there already. If Duan calls this. We'll have one of the biggest pots we've ever seen. And still a river to come. And there's the call. much deliberation, Tom calls, which I think is the only option. You can't go around folding queens in the spot, especially if you think Wesley is going to be bluffing some decent chunk of the time. And in this spot, he could certainly have lots of ace high flush draws. He may have some random nonsense like Jack-10 suited for all I know. So you can't fold the queens in this scenario, getting pretty good odds. You may think if he's going to call, shouldn't he just jam so he doesn't get outdrawn? And the answer is no, because when you do jam, yeah, whatever nonsense Wesley has is going to fold, but he's always going to call with aces, and he's always going to call with kings. And if he happens to have an eight with a random hand like ace eight suited, king eight suited, nine eight suited, eight seven suited, he's always going to call as well. So calling's the only option for Tom. Let's head to the river. The river's a six. Wesley with just ace high. Duan checks it one more time. All in. There's the all in. He said all in? He said all in. For sure? Well, I guess. He said all in. Yes. Okay. 
I'm gonna get a water. <laughs> Pot has got 2.3 million in there. Wesley is just triple barreled with Ace King. What the f The river comes the six of clubs. Tom Duan checks. Wesley with the heart of the champion. Rips it all in for 786,000 into the $1.5 million pot. I actually like this bluff a lot. When you have ace king in the spot, you block some of the auto calls for Tom, which would be aces and kings, which makes it way more likely that he has a hand like queens or jacks or tens or maybe some other ace high, which you don't really care about. So I think ace king's a pretty great bluffing hand in this scenario. He does rip it in. And now Tom like quadruple confirms that Wesley did go all in. And look, I'm not gonna say anything bad about Wesley here. I have had only good experiences with Wesley. But when you're in Tom's shoes against anyone, anyone in the whole world, you want to triple confirm that your opponent is all in unless they very clearly put their money in the pot. And in this scenario, Wesley did not actually take his chips and put them in. He just kind of muttered something, right? It was obviously all in, but he kind of muttered something. The dealer confirmed, whatever, they all confirmed it. But sometimes in some casinos where the rules are not very clear or maybe... A player's really friendly with the floor manager. Who knows what's happening? In scenarios like this, the player in Wesley's shoes can go all in. And then Tom would call and then win the pot. And then after that, the player in Wesley's shoes would say, I didn't go all in. I said check. And I was waiting for him to show. Or something like that, right? So you always got to protect yourself before you wreck yourself. And it's very clear that Tom is doing that because he probably doesn't know Wesley, right? And... I think that's probably a smart thing to do. It actually is a smart thing to do. Don't feel offended if someone does that because look, you got to protect yourself. Um, again, I've had no problems with Wesley. I think he's perfectly legit, but I'm just trying to explain what why Tom did what he did in this spot because it actually is important to make sure you get paid whenever you do happen to call and win. All right, enough of that. Let's see if Tom finds the hero call. Doug so saw his hand. This is a weird hand. Doug saw his hand, tried to talk him out of three betting. Three bet anyway. I mean, I guess he just flopped an eight, but it seems very hard to fold. Oh. I'm gonna feel dumb when you roll over like eight seven suited or some shit. Maybe nine seven suited. What the f Tom Dwan has been part of some of the biggest hands in poker history, and once again, he is here on our stage. Just under 800,000 to call. We've got 2.3 million in the pot. You could just have the aces. It just doesn't seem like you have aces. I'm gonna feel dumb if you do. From everything Dwan is talk oh. saying, it sounds like he has kings. What the? F Look at the size of that pot. Feels like you just flop trips. But it 
Five bets pre-flop. Wesley bet the flop, bet the turn, and has moved all in on the river. We've got 2.3 million in there. Feels like you just flopped. Huh. Have you all been paying attention to Doug Polk in this hand? He is sitting there trying to be just as stoic as he possibly can. And look, that's all you can do when you see your opponent playing a gigantic pot, which is why I definitely recommend not showing your cards to anyone because you never know what kind of nonsense may happen. And if anything, it looks to me like Doug Polk doesn't really want to get called. Again, I have no reads on Doug Polk, but in general, someone's sitting there super stoic, unless they're going to be very balanced with that, which I have to presume Doug will do. Uh, that probably airs towards Wesley bluffing. That said, after the hand, they, Tom talked about how he tried to not look at Doug because that's like, you know, it's not unethical at all, but it's maybe potentially not viewed as within the rules. Whatever. You don't want to ruin the fun atmosphere of the game where people show each other their cards and have a circus. Fine. Whatever. Okay. Should Tom find the hero call is the question. In this scenario, Tom wants to ask, what are my pot odds? In this situation, he has to put in... How much? 786,000 to try to win 3.1 million total, which means he needs to win about 25% of the time, which means he needs for Wesley to be bluffing more than 25% of the time. So what does Wesley's shoving range look like? Well, he would shove aces and kings, I think. There's six combinations of each of those that will very clearly play this way and shove. Then you want to ask, are there any other hands that Wesley could reasonably have? Well, he could have two combinations of ace-8 suited, king-8 suited, 9-8 suited, 8-7 suited, and 9-7 suited. Now, will he actually play all of those in this manner? Maybe he will, maybe he won't. It's tough to know. I gotta presume he's not going to always 4-bet those hands pre-flop, right? Maybe only 4-bets them 20% of the time. So in this spot, we have 12 hands that would obviously play this way that Tom loses to, plus maybe 3 or 4 or 5 or 10 combinations that uh, Tom also loses to. Fine. What does Tom beat? Well, logical bluffs that Wesley could have include ace-king and ace-queen. There's 16 ace-king and ace-eight queens because Tom blocks the queens. And then there are mm, roughly six ace-x of diamonds that may decide to play in this manner. So that's 30 maybes. So how often will he actually bluff with those maybes and actually play them this way all the way up until the river? Again, I don't know. Maybe 20% of the time he decides to go for it in this spot. And if that's the case, there are 30 combinations times 0.2. That means there are six combinations of bluffs. Now, the question becomes, what's the ratio? If there's, let's pretend, hypothetically, there's six bluffs and there are maybe 21 hands total, that means Wesley's going to be bluffing 28% of the time. 28% is more than 25, therefore, Tom should call. If he thinks that Wesley has fewer value hands, because maybe he never four bets the ace eight suited, king eight suited, nine eight suited, eight seven suited, and nine seven suited, and he doesn't play them this way all the way through ever. Well, then now there's 12 value hands, right? So now it'd be six divided by tw uh, six divided by 18, which means Wesley's going to be bluffing 33% of the time, which makes it an even easier call. What if instead Tom thinks that Wesley would never bluff ace king or ace queen in this way? So he only bluffs with ace x of diamonds, and he only has some combinations of those then it would be almost no bluffs, right? So if he has 12 combinations of aces and kings and only, let's say, three combinations of bluffs, that's three divided by 15, which is 20%, which means now Tom should fold. He's got queens. There's the call! Is that a call? Call. Oh. Tom Dwan has just won the biggest pot in the history of televised poker. $3.1 million to Tom Dwan. This is 1.5 and change. Holy s. Careful, man. What's this? 40. What's this? You are no champion. 70. 70. You have more heart than anyone here. 1, 2, 3. You okay with? 784, 5. 784. Wesley is shaking. He Seven, just lost four, three million a three million dollar pot here on Hustler Casino Live. You know, I thought you had eighty-four five. Uh, just count it. Okay. I thought you had aces, Tom. <laughs> We're still in the blender, not queens. Snap. I would snap. It. Oh my Seven, God! What a, 40, oh my 70, God. 80, what a call, Tom! Very dangerous to put these live It was a flip. It was a flip. What a call, Tom! Tom, it was a flip. Oh, can't bluff, Tom. 
Si se lo pa' que bluff him. He tried, I mean, a lot of heart. Oh I won't be calling you a nit on the internet now, that's for sure. Yeah, if anyone calls Wesley a nit ever again, I'll fight them. Yeah. 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 We, we should. Uh, yeah. Dude, you know what the toughest spot there? Let's Doug. Let's Doug, let's Doug looks so. You f not look at it. Yeah, I, I, I don't know if you noticed. I, I noticed that. I, 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 it's different if Wesley calls the clock. I'm staring at Doug. But since he didn't, I tried to not look at it. I thought you didn't give anything away either. I just, I was. No, I tried to look at you zero. I don't think you looked at him at all, really. I mean, I thought the pre-flop was fair to think about, but not. You know. Wow. Nice call. Can I have a beer? Get that man a beer. Can somebody get me a beer? Tom DeMond, you're not back. That's all that's going on. We need to stop showing each other our cards when we play versus Tom. For now on, one to a hand. I, I, I said I owe you one. You Remember? did? Yeah. I know, you did, you did. And after much thought, much deliberation, Tom finally makes the call and wins the biggest pot in streamed poker history, televised poker history, and probably one of the biggest pots ever. Good job, good work. Wesley, the liquidator, got liquidated this time. Don't worry, still has one and a half million dollars left to play with. And uh, you gotta give a credit, to, credit to Wesley. He decided to go for it. I don't know if I would have had the courage of a champion to go for it in this spot, but Wesley did. Sometimes it's gonna work out, but this time, it did not. That's gonna be it for today. If you enjoyed today's video, click the like and subscribe buttons down below. Also click the notification bell. And if you enjoy this channel, tell your friends. I would appreciate it. If you wanna see another fun hand where Tom Dwan decides to get after it in a crazy bluff scenario, we have that video lined up for you next. Thank you for being here. I appreciate you. Thanks to Hustler Casino Live for putting on the stream and thanks to all the players for playing because it creates an awesome experience for all of us viewers. Thank you. And I'll talk to you next time.